everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and welcome to the second bonus video of the 2022 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. Tonight, we are going to be dyeing the Full Skein Sparkle Bonus Colorway. This will be dyed on a super fun yarn base that is Merino and Lurex, and the way that the Lurex wraps around the yarn gives it almost this barber pole feel. Now, Lurex is a fiber that doesn't really get stained when you're dyeing it with acid dyes. And so the silver fiber really, really pops against dark colors. And I knew that today I wanted to create something that would play around with this contrast, that would play around with some more saturated and less saturated colors. So why don't we dip dye? Now, I want to dip dye the yarn and have two different colors featured. But the problem with dip dyeing into two colors is that sometimes you end up with less saturated colors in the middle where they start to overlap because you'll have the dark color at one side that'll get less saturated, a dark color on the other that gets less saturated. So I thought that it would be worthwhile to start out dyeing a tonal first and then arranging the tonal the way I want and then dip dyeing into the color that will ultimately be our more saturated color. So this way we get a pastel going into deep, but we have more, a little bit more hues going on. And then with that, hopefully we'll end up with some drama where we'll have less contrast and more contrast as we go through. But now let's go take a closer look at our yarn base. Our fingering weight yarn base today is 90% superwash merino wool, 10% lurex. And the metallic lurex fiber is plied with the yarn in a way that it is very regular and consistent. Uh, it's sort of on, all on the surface of the yarn versus when you have Stellina and it's kind of blended with the fiber and peaks out here and there. This gives the yarn a very, very sparkly finish and I really love this base. I'm adding on removable nylon zip ties to my yarn and pre-soaking it in plain tap water for at least 30 minutes before we dye our first step. But while that's pre-soaking, let's talk about our colors. I plan to use the following two colors to achieve my color goal. Electric Violet and Midnight Blue from Dharma Trading Company. Midnight Blue is a pretty purpley blue. It's a lovely, lovely color, but it does lean slightly purple. And Electric Violet is a very intense color. But I don't want the electric violet to be mega intense. I want to get it more pastel to have something softer for that first layer. So I put on my Deluxe Rubber Respirator Mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and started measuring out our electric violet dye. I weighed out five grams of the dye and started dissolving it in hot tap water to bring the total volume up to 500 milliliters giving us a 1% stock solution. This is probably way more dye than I will need for this project because I think for each batch, well, we'll start small at first and build it up. In this kettle, I have 32 cups of water. Now, a lot of times when dyeing a pastel, I might want to start cold, but since I'm dyeing a lot of this colorway, I don't want to have to reset the pot every time between each color. So we're gonna start hot. And we're gonna start with 25 milliliters of our electric violet acid dye. Hopefully for 400 grams of yarn, this is a good amount. It's possible that I should have started a little bit lighter, but if this is only about a 0.0625% depth of shade of this color, so that's pretty low, and who knows, we may end up wanting more. Uh, I do wanna add some acid. All right, we've got 32 cups. Let's start with four tablespoons of white vinegar. It's possible that I might want more, but this is a ratio of one tablespoon of vinegar and eight cups of water, which is often where I start with like a lower amount of acid. So we will see. But now I think this is hot enough, so I'm gonna come over with my yarn. I've got 400 grams of yarn, and the goal is not, is not to dip dye exactly, but we are gonna be effectively dip dyeing as we go in. Um, so I'm gonna hold it, and we're gonna go in and out really, really fast. 
Uh, there is not a lot of color in here, so therefore I'm expecting things to start striking pretty quickly. But the goal is to get the yarn in and stirred up pretty quickly. Yeah, and we've soaked up this color mega, mega, mega fast. Okay, I think that this is okay for the first round, but I think I'm gonna need to reset with less acid. Uh, I think that I will be able to make this work for what I want, but you could see just how fast that's soaked up. And so I think I'll be able to pick uh, an area here to go into the next bath last. That'll be fine, but that, that soaked up the dye super, super fast. It's one of the problems with not having a lot of dye, but actually we could try something where we do this with uh, less yarn because then I'll be able to have a little more control over it as we're going in. So maybe we'll try that next, but I'm gonna let this sit for five minutes, then we will remove the yarn uh, to let it cool and prepare for the next step. Uh, and then we'll try something else with the same pot before we go and reduce for uh, less acid. It's been five minutes and I'm debating. Ooh, I mean, we're so close to what I wanted. We'll see what it looks like in a moment. I mean, part of me is debating if I go in with less yarn, I'll be able to get the yarn in faster and so I'll be able to get more coverage. Um, and then the rest of me is thinking, oh, we should reset with less acid because if we have less acid in here, then um, the colors will strike slower and even doing two at a time with less acid will get more even coverage. But I don't know if I want even coverage. I mean, this is really, really close to what I want color-wise. I think that rather than trying to do 12 milliliters for 200 grams, maybe we'll try to do 10. So we'll reduce the dye a tiny bit but yeah, let, let's try it with this pot because I really like how quickly things struck. Let's try this again. This time I'm coming over with 10 milliliters of our electric violet color. I'm gonna stir it up. So this is a little less than half the dye we had last time. All right, and I'm coming in with 200 grams of yarn and we're gonna go in really, really fast. The reason why I'm moving and still dipping some is because we do want to get coverage, as much coverage all over the yarn as we can. And if, you know, we just put in, then there could be spots trapped. So there is, I guess, a dip dyed element to it. Uh, but hopefully since the pot is less crowded, which it is, it looks like we got better coverage of color onto our yarn this time. And in fact, I don't think it has all struck yet. We can peek. I still see a hint of color in there. So I think that this may have slowed things down a bit. The pot is still nice, hot, and steamy. Uh, I'm gonna let this sit for five minutes and we'll check back in. All right, let's look and see. All right, just about all that color has absorbed and the color is overall more even. I think this is the way we're gonna do it, especially because after five minutes, this yarn is ready. And honestly, this layer is gonna go a lot faster because it's the next layer where we'll have a lot more time for the yarn to set. I think in the future, I would remove this yarn after five minutes so it can start cooling off so I can get ready to dip dye it. But I'm gonna leave this one in the pot for a little while longer just because I want to go start developing our midnight layer on the yarn. And so this will, um, it's not gonna hurt the yarn to have more time in the heat. And this is the round that will overall go faster. Okay, coming back to our first round of yarn. Uh, when we're gonna dip dye this, we're gonna pick uh, some of the area that has a bit more of the purple consistently. Maybe not the deepest, but just more overall and move the zip tie down there. So that way some of the area that got less pigment will be uh, down at the other side. And so there is gonna be some variation here. We do have some tonal variation up there. I'm happy that the silver is actually popping um, really nicely. It will pop for sure. The silver will pop more once we once we have like the deeper color, but I'm I'm very, very happy with this so far. 
All right, and there we go. This way, we know when we get to wherever the other color goes. I don't know if we'll end up putting the yarn all the way in or not. We'll kind of see how the color is striking. We're only gonna dip dye two skeins at a time because that is, I know what I can handle there. Uh, and yeah, we'll see how things go. While we waited for our lavender yarn to cool a bit so I can move the zip ties around, I put my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves back on to measure out some of the midnight blue acid dye for our next round. This is the round where we want the dye to be a lot darker over at least a segment of the yarn. So I measured out one and a half grams of the midnight blue acid dye. This is the total amount of dye I will use in one of the batches. And then I dissolved the dye in an unspecified volume of hot tap water until it was well dissolved. I decided to measure out the amount that I wanted for one set instead of making a stock solution because I'm using enough of this color that even if I made a liter, that would only work for a handful of batches anyway. So depending on how things go, I can then measure out multiple batches of what I need at a time and set those up individually. And I don't think that that should be much of an issue. It just means I'll have to put my mask on more. In our second pot, we're heating up 16 cups of water. And now I'm gonna come in with all of this dye that we just measured out. It is a very purpley blue. I'm gonna rinse out the cup. I mean, now I'm having a weird feeling because in the cup it's looking to be like almost the same color as electric violet, which is throwing me off. It is a different color though, I promise. <laughs> it is definitely more, more blue. Um, okay, because here we've got some electric violet, here we have some of the midnight blue. They are different. <laughs> All right, to our pot, I'm gonna add four tablespoons of white vinegar because over here, I want the color to strike a little bit fast, but we have so much more dye that it will take more time. And I'm gonna continue to let this heat up uh, before we start dip dyeing. We are hot and I am going to come over to start dip dyeing. So again, I haven't yet decided, ooh, look at that color if we're gonna add in all of the yarn at the end, I think it depends on how quickly the colors strike. Um, so this midnight blue is a very saturated color. I am trying to make sure that we get good coverage. I'm opening up the skeins a little bit, so that way as we dip in, we can get more of the yarn exposed and I'm also moving it. Um, I'm also trying to move the yarn a fair amount so that way that coverage keeps coming up. But I do want some of our more lavender, red or purple to remain. Oof, aha, but look. See how much of that color has struck already? This is almost gonna look like it's a color that has broken but we really have two different colors here. Oof, we have the dark nighttime with that silver sparkle of stars and then our lighter color, which if I start to add this in, you can see that there is not very much color left in here. The good news, <laughs> the really, really good news is that basically all of the color has struck. Um, and so in theory, when I'm scaling this up, one thing that I can do is I can take the yarn out and put it in a steamer basket to finish setting the color. And so then I can start doing another dip dye sooner. But I think what I'm gonna do, because I'm curious, is I'm gonna go ahead and add all of the yarn in because I wanna see if we're gonna end up with transfer down there. And I'm gonna leave this all in the pot for 30 minutes. And in this time, we'll see if we end up with some transfer from our like midnight color onto there. But I am very, very happy with the speed that this struck. I think that we've got something that's gonna work great. Now I just wish I had like five dye pots. <laughs> It's been 30 minutes and our lavender is still looking very lavender. I'm trying to see, I didn't move it at one point. I don't think I necessarily see like any color that is transferred. Sometimes color comes back out 
when it's on the pot, but I think all in the pot worked pretty well. It helps that they're very, very similar colors. Now, before we go and get ready to uh, dip dye the rest of the yarn, oh, that's so, so pretty. I wanna set this aside to cool so we can wash it and just make sure we don't have any bleeding issues because this midnight blue is not a color I have used often enough. And so I just want to make sure that it's gonna wash okay. Now, down here, this is looking very, very navy to me, but what's great about the midnight blue is that I think it's a little bit redder. Diluted navy looks like a grayish blue, whereas this, I think, eh, maybe it would be similar, but I like the mid-tones here. It still feels very, very rich. Um, so I'm gonna let this cool, ah, like right here, there may be a hint where it picked up a little bit of the other blue, but again, the colors are so similar that I don't think it's a big deal, and that could have come from some of like the edge over here. So anyway, I'll be back soon so we can wash the yarn. Now I just have one concern left, and that is do I have enough midnight blue to dye all of the colorways? And so this is something that I don't think I'll know until I try measuring out all of the dye. I conceivably, in a two ounce jar, should have enough dye with some extra. And this is not a color I've used a ton of, but I don't, this is when it would be helpful to have an inventory of your dyes and each time you use some of it, then you would know about how much you have left. I don't know how much I have left, but I'm gonna do as much of the dyeing today as I can, so that way I can place an order should I need to. Actually, I think I might need a Dharma order anyway, so maybe I'll just go ahead and order more of it so that way some will be here next week should I need that. I'm sitting here letting the yarn cool, gonna go for a walk, and I realized I miscalculated the amount of dye I would need because I was like, okay, if I need one and a half grams per batch, and then I was thinking about the total number of skeins, not that uh, that's for two skeins of yarn. So it's not one and a half times the number of skeins, it's 0.75 times the number of skeins, but well, I've already placed the order and I needed more yellow anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I should be fine. <laughs> Let's wash our yarn and see how this, and see how this goes. I'm gonna add a little bit of some dish soap into this water. I'm very optimistic because I did use Midnight Blue for something recently and it struck well, but you never know how dyes might do on yarn, especially with like a synthetic fiber like the Lurex, if some dye kind of like sticks and needs to be rinsed off or what, but I'm not seeing any color come out. That makes me so, so happy. I'm so happy that we achieved the depth of color that we did on for one end and so oh, I'm so excited but now I really have to get to work because we have a lot more yarn to dye. Uh, I am going to go ahead and finish rinsing out the soap then I'm going to put the yarn through my spin dryer hang it up to dry and we'll dye some more yarn. It's time to scale things up and so I'm going to measure out one and a half grams of our midnight blue acid dye multiple times. <laughs> And then in each cup, I'm going to dissolve the dye in just hot tap water, uh, make sure it's nice and mixed. And then I'm going to be setting these aside in a secondary container, so that way they're ready to go when I'm ready to do that next batch. Again, I could probably make a big stock solution, but the one and a half grams of Midnight Blue was really easy to dissolve. And sometimes when you're trying to dissolve a larger volume of powder, things can clump and it can get very frustrating. And so this worked for me. And then I know that the dyes that I'm making also are relatively fresh. Uh, and so I know that there's going to be some amount of consistency batch to batch, even when there's variation with how and how fast I dip or what the pH is of the dye bath at the given time. Now it's time for me to scale up the production level of our lavender color. And so using the same pot as long as I can, I would go and add 
10 milliliters of my stirred stock of electric violet, the 1% stock solution that I made at the beginning of the video. Uh, stir things up in the pot and then add 200 grams of our Lurex Blend yarn. Uh, adding it and sort of dipping and moving it around to try to get even-ish coverage. I like there to be some tonal variation, but we want to try to get reasonable coverage over the yarn. Then I let it sit in the pot to absorb all of the color for about five minutes or so. Every once in a while, I might add a tiny bit more acid. There seems to be a little bit of a pink buildup that is sort of left behind in the pot, which I'm not worrying about. This yarn is going to get more exposure to heat as we do the second dip dye, but if that color seems to become a little bit too much, then we can go ahead and reset this pot. But the longer we can use it, the better. We're not diluting the acid in here much because we're only adding 10 milliliters of dye, but there is some water that is coming in with our yarn, and so it's not that the acid is getting used up in the dyeing process. Uh, there's like plenty, plenty of acid. Uh, so it's just that adding more liquid and changing the volume because some liquid might come back out with it, that can change things. But as you can see, I just did layer after layer after layer of this color on yarn, waiting approximately five minutes in between each set. And then I set them aside to cool so I could move the zip tie a bit and then we could go do our second dip dye once that pot has cleared up. You may have noticed in some of those videos that the water is becoming a little bit cloudy. And I just wanna show off what the pre-soak water from this looks like. Um, it is cloudy. If I stick my hand in, you can't see to the bottom. So there's something in the yarn that is coming out with the pre-soak. And some of that is ending up, especially in the lavender pot. And so I just thought that this was worth sharing so that way you could see. As I was sitting up to dip dye into the midnight blue again, it occurred to me that I could have mixed these dyes with some water with vinegar at the ratios that I want to dip dye in. And because then when I'm adding volume, things would be consistent. Uh, so I think that I will start with hot water when I go to dissolve more, but then I'll top some off with mixture that was eight cups of water with two tablespoons of white vinegar. And then if the water level seems to be getting low in the pot, I can also top it off with some more of that mixture, but making sure to make things nice and hot again before we start dip dyeing. Dip dyeing into the midnight blue is definitely our rate limiting step, but I don't want to add more yarn to these dip dyes because then the color won't be as even or as deep at the end. And as you open up the skeins, you might see patches that are lighter and darker. It's not gonna be like a perfectly matched gradient across the entire skein. Uh, and so the more things are bunched up, the more variation you'll get, which is why 200 grams of yarn at a time is a good number. The lavender stage goes so, so much faster. And so eventually I will finish dyeing the lavender of everything before probably I've even done half of this dip dyeing stage. And so then at that point, I'll be able to start doing this dip dyeing in two pots at once, which will speed everything up. And by two pots at once, I mean sequentially, like what I'll do one and then set the timer for 30 minutes, then do the other. Uh, I'm not gonna try to have two hands over two pots. I think that would be too much. Here we have our finished colorway, or at least a handful of the skeins, where we have a really pastel lavender with an increasingly deepening blue that goes it leans a bit navy, but Midnight Blue really is the best name for this color. I think I pointed this out during the dyeing, but in some places we do have some of the Midnight Blue coming up and blending in with the lavender a little bit. The main reason why I think that this happened is that there was a little bit of the color left in the pot, and then once everything is in the in the dye bath, then that color sort of came onto the yarn. If you wanted to prevent that, the best thing to do would have been to have some kind of stick or something with the pot, so that way you leave that pastel area completely out of the water uh, would be one way to do that. I'm really glad that I dyed this in the way that we did with doing that kettle dye for the first layer followed by dip dyeing. Because if I had dip dyed into the purple and then dip dyed into the blue, 
I doubt I would have ended up with something that is as pastel as we ended up with here. Uh, and I didn't want that color to be too deep. I wanted it to really feel like that blue is fading away. And I'd say we completely achieved that. I love these wispy areas where we have like a little bit of blue and then you just watch it deepen until you get to the total depth. The other thing we really achieved here was another one of my goals, to go for low contrast with the Lurex and then just slowly increase that contrast as we deepen the color to the other side. So in our deepest areas, you really, really see the silver sparkle uh, sort of highlighted against that backdrop. Whereas back in the lightest area, the silver really does blend in with the purple that we have. I'm pretty sure I talked about this earlier, but when it came to this video, I had a lot of different ideas and types of colorways and things I wanted to create. I knew I wanted something that was on the more repeating side of things, but I just couldn't make up my mind on what I wanted to do. And so I'm really glad that this is where we ended up. I loved the softness that we have in here while still having some really fun contrast. Uh, I think that this could work up in a lot of very, very beautiful ways. And well, honestly, this color shift and color change would make a really beautiful fade set. And so that's something that I should explore also someday. Not that this Lorex yarn base is available as mini skeins, but you can always wind your own mini skeins if you want. When I fold up a skein like this, you can really see the contrast between the deep and the paler color and then some of those more medium sections. Right down here, that blue gets so, so deep. And what's funny, like, I would describe Lurex as being super shiny more than glittery because there's just a lot of reflective uh, material there. There is definitely some, like, sparkle, but I think there's just a more consistent shine to it that's really fun. But anyway, I'm gonna go twist up all of these skeins. I really debated how to twist this colorway up. Uh, sometimes when I have something with like a smaller section of a different color, I like to sort of put it in the middle when I twist so things are more mixed up. But I really wanted to highlight some of these soft differences. I think that by, you know, you holding it at the lavender end, you can see the depth between the darkness and some of the more medium tones in here, and that we have like a big section of that lighter color. And so I hope that that comes through uh, when you look at this pretty sparkly bonus skein. And as I move it, you can really get a sense of the shine, even using like diffuse light in here for filming. And you can really just see that contrast of the Lurex with the dark color. And the shine is still very much present on these lighter ends. Like you can see that shine in there. It's just that the contrast between that shine is a lot less than it is at the very deepest end. We did it! <laughs> We did it! This is the last yarn dyeing video of the 2022 Chemnitz Hanukkah special. And I believe that this is actually the last colorway that I dyed for the whole special and series as well. Which, it's so funny because it feels like I did this all so recently. When at this stage, mid-December, I dyed all this yarn, I think, mid-October. So it was a little while ago. But don't worry, this is the last dyeing video, but the 2022 Chemnitz Hanukkah special isn't over yet. Uh, tomorrow night, I'll be sharing a vlog where I'll have some behind the scenes clips of some of these videos, some of my thought process behind the videos, but I'll also take you through and show you the extras assembling the samplers, what the packaging looks like, and things like that. And so I'm very, very excited to go back and look at that footage because I still have to edit it. I love sparkle yarn so much, and this color combination that we created is beautiful. I mean what I said when I think that this should be a fade set. I think it would be really fun to play around more with intentionally blending and mixing colors to create different types of fades. Something that I have played with in a few videos, but you know, mixing and getting the right depth and things that I want is something that I definitely need more practice with. And so I think we'll get more videos like that in 2023.
please make sure you're subscribed and do all the youtube -y things. Uh, subscribing is free and the more you engage with any of my videos, the more YouTube is likely to recommend them to more people who might be interested in what goes into dyeing yarn. Uh, I love sharing my journey and the growth that I've had as a fiber artist. And I know that the more that I dye and film, the more I continue to grow. And one of my big goals is to make yarn dyeing feel approachable and accessible. And so I hope that by showing a variety of dyeing techniques, whether you're going with commercial acid dyes and dedicated dye equipment, like I've been using over this Hanukkah special, or you're going for food coloring and things that you may have around the house, I, it's a lot of fun and I love all of it. If you've been a huge fan of Chemnitz for a while and want another way to help support the content here, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Over there, depending on the level that you select, you can get behind the scenes sneak peeks, early access to new content, uh, you get to vote in the direction of some content, and more. Uh, you can find more information at patreon.com slash Chemnitz, and there will be a link down in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I will see you back here tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern time to take a look at the behind the scenes vlog. Thank you so much for watching.